So this is my SW900 e-bike computer. And basically it controls my 9 MOSFET tube controller, which basically controls all aspects of my e-bike. The control functions themselves are controlled by three buttons on the left, the up arrow, the down arrow, and the middle arrow, which is the multifunction button. There are so many things that you can control on this panel. I'm going to walk you through what those functions are and what impact they have on the bike. So what you'll see is the three buttons on the left here are controlling your computer. The up and down, the middle of multifunction. A long hold, once the battery is turned on, will turn on the LCD display. And there you can see that's my odometer. You'll see various functions here, which I'll illustrate to you. And you can go through it. So this, this middle area is going to give you your speed, your battery, how much battery you've got left. I just came back from a 35 mile bike ride, so I only have three bars left. This is your wattage. You want to keep an eye on your wattage while you're riding so that you don't overextend the bike. This is your pedal assist mode. There's five of them here. You can go through them with the up arrow, one, two, three. As you go through, number five uses the most motor energy and the least pedal energy. Number one uses the most, it's an eco it's an eco selection so that you'll, your pedaling is more than your, your motor. If you press the up and down arrows, this will get you into your, your panel, which has 15 functions which you can control. Number one is how uh, light you want your LCD display, one being the darkest, number three being the brightest. I keep mine on three. I live in a very sunny area, so I like to see uh, as much as I can. It's completely your choice. Number two is whether or not you want to register through kilometers or miles per hour. So the selection of zero gives you kilometers, number one gives you miles. Number three, which is usually set at the factory, is the voltage of the battery that you're using and the motor. And mine is a 48 volt uh, battery and motor, so I, I pick 48. Number four is sleep time, so when you want the LCD display to go to sleep, you can choose between zero and 60, or not at all, so basically that's your choice. Number five is pedal assist mode. You have two choices. Zero is for three grades of pedal assist and one is for five grades of pedal assist. Five giving you more sensitivity in terms of the control of how much pedaling you do versus the work of the motor. Number six is your wheel size. Very important that you change this. The default at the factory is 26 inches, which is a very common for off-road bikes. Mine is a 29, so I use 29. Uh, there's 27.5, there's lots of different sizes, 20 inch wheels bases. So determine which size of wheel you have, and that really impacts the bike in terms of your speedometer, the miles calculated, and speed. Number seven is the speed measuring magnet. It ranges from one to 100. Now this is usually set at the factory to a default number for your engine and your controller. Mine, because mine's a 48 volt, 1000 watt motor, mine is set to 46. I would not mess with this. This determines the accuracy of detecting your speed, your distance. So stick with whatever the default setting is. Number eight is your speed limit. This is really important. Depending on where you live, whether it's Canada, the United States, or Europe, Europe, the limit for e-bikes is 15 miles per hour. Many of the governors are set on, on the motors there. Here in the United States and California, we can go up to 28 miles per hour, but you can set this motor between 0 and 100 so you can get the maximum speed out of the motor. But if you're concerned about putting a governor on in terms of reducing the speed, you can control it on this setting in number 8. It's very, very important. Whether you're concerned about safety or you're concerned about law, what the speed limit of the motor is, is very important. Number nine is called zero start or non-zero start, and basically de facto is to set it to zero, which means you can have immediate access to the throttle. If you press number one, which is a non-zero start, it is a delayed reaction to the throttle kicking in. Number 10 is driving mode, which determines which PAS system you're using. There's three choices, zero, one, and two. Zero is driven by the PAS, your pedal assist system, and there's no throttle available. Number one is driven completely by the throttle with no PAS or pedal assist. And number two is a combination of pedal assist and throttle. Number 11 is pedal assist sensitivity, and it ranges from 1 to 24. I pick, because I use a lot of pedaling, I pick the highest number, to number 24, so I get the most out of the pedal assist, which also gives me a much longer range, much less effort on the, on the motor and on the battery. 
pedal assist start strength is how quickly your pedal assist kicks in. So if it ranges from zero to five, I pick five so there's more sensitivity to when it immediately starts in. The PAS magnet is number 13. There are three different types. The choices are five, eight, and 12. Usually those are set at the uh, manufacturer level by default. Mine is number five, uh, but you wanna probably stick with the default mechanism that comes with your motor. Number 14, I would bypass altogether. It's the current limiting of your controller. If you're, if you're an electronics buff, you might want to mess around with this a little bit. You have a choice between 1 and 20 amps. The de facto is set at 12 amps. Number 15 is set, again, at the factory and is not anything that you can change. These are the 15 different choices that you uh, control your bike, how fast it operates, how much pedal assist you can get, your wheel size, your speed sensitivity.